So, did painting for Golden Demon teach me anything to make me a better speed painter? Probably not, but I guess we can find out. Now that I'm done with all the sweaty try-hard painting for Golden Demon, it's time to sit back, relax, and just paint for fun. And by that, I don't mean just slopping down some contrast paints. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No, today I'm gonna paint one of these cute new Crute models that Games Workshop graciously sent me to see if I can unlock some new efficiencies in my method of painting models fast and still looking good. Now, if you've listened to our podcast Trapped Under Plastic before, you may have heard me complaining about how polyurethane primers for an airbrush are the worst thing ever invented for our hobby. Seriously, just about every clog and sputtering problem you've had with your airbrush can be linked back to you using that airbrush to prime. So I've picked up this weird stuff that Gunpla painters swear by, and honestly, this stuff is kind of magic. Now, the stuff isn't water-based, so you're going to use mineral spirits to clean your airbrush out afterwards, but it creates such a smooth, silky prime that I just don't think I'm ever going to go back to regular airbrush priming again. Also, the microscopically thin candy shell that it puts on the model is incredibly durable. You won't be rubbing off this primer accidentally while you're painting. I am going to reintegrate rattle can priming for big projects with lots of models, but if you wanted to try this stuff out for yourself, I put a link down in the video description for you. Now, it's not a fun speed paint project if I'm not trying out something new, and today I'm going to be messing with the new Atom paints by Big Child Creatives. I picked these up at Adepticon, tested them out at a speed paint competition there, and was really impressed. So we're going to put them through their paces today on this crew. And these paints are so new that they're not actually available for purchase yet, but I'm told by Big Child Creatives that their Kickstarter will be coming in the near future, and you can check out their website if you wanted to get notified when the Kickstarter goes live. All right, if we're going to be efficient with our time and try to improve how good our models look with speed painting, the first thing we're going to do is throw base coats out the window. You've probably heard me say this before, but base coating your models is both the most boring and the most time-intensive step in miniature painting. So if we want to paint fast and we want to have some fun we need to throw base coating out the window. But what do we do instead? I've been experimenting with a lot of different ways to sidestep the base coating process. And today, we're going to try a new approach that doesn't require an airbrush at all. I'm starting by simply mixing two different colors on my palette. Now, neither of these colors is super dark, but because we're also going to thin this paint way down, it's going to leave a single transparent coat over the black primer, which will darken it. Now, it really doesn't matter that we're exact here. If you're colors bleed together a little bit or overlap, that's fine. If you miss some small spots entirely, that's also fine. If you really want to speed up your army painting process, just have your kids do this step because seriously, they can't screw it up. All we're doing here is creating an interesting shadow color that we'll build off of later. And it's important to note that not all paint brands will perform this step equally well. Because we're thinning down this paint a lot to almost a wash-like consistency, it's really important that the pigment quality of your paint is extremely high. If you've got good quality paint, even this extreme thinning will go on the model looking quite vibrant because it's really intense in the pigments. After working with these paints a bit, I was pretty excited to try them in this process because of two reasons. Number one, they're extremely high quality pigments with a big pigment load, meaning they're going to be super vibrant on our model. But number two, they're also a really familiar miniature paint consistency. Look, there's other really high-end artist paints out there, but they're really thick or they're just not what we're used to. But with these, I get to go through my regular painting process, but it's like I'm driving a Lamborghini as opposed to a Honda Civic. This means I can quickly get to my favorite part of painting, pushing the shapes and details with vibrant, interesting colors as soon as possible. It's key to note that I'm not covering all of that first shadow layer. I'm just following the details of the model while following the light source from directly above. You can even do small lines, scratches, and textures into that shadow area a bit to add interest to your shapes. Today's video is brought to us by Harry's. And since I've been using Harry's for over a year now, I thought it would be a good time to explain why I'm not going back to any other brand, and I don't think you should either. If you're anything like me, you don't want to have another thing you must sign up for in order to get a good deal. And with Harry's, 
you don't have to. With a new Shave and Suds bundle, you get to try out Harry's because they're so confident that you're gonna be impressed by the quality and the price. The bundle contains one orange Truman handle plus two blades, an eight count pack of blades, one free travel size body wash, and one free travel size exfoliating face wash. So you get great quality products that you're gonna need anyways, and you don't have to worry about it in your already busy life. Plus, you get them at the best price with my discount code down below. They're an additional 18% off. So it's just 27 bucks for this, which will last you quite a while. And while this special offer is only available here online, I also love that I can go pick up new blades and other Harry's products at my local retailers like Target, Walmart, and Costco. So click the link below and join me in using the best combination of affordability and quality with Harry's. Thanks Harry's for sponsoring today's video. Now as I've shared how I do my standard layering process for speed painting, I get some questions from viewers about how come their version of it doesn't look the same as mine from the videos. And honestly, it's a valid question and the answer is pretty straightforward. I'm not always using the same paint consistency. Much of the brush strokes you see me doing are with opaque paint, so we can get full coverage over the surface in just one coat while we keep moving around the model to finish it. Now, this is also based on the fact that you're using paint that's super punchy and opaque that one coat will do the job. But sometimes I want a bit more of that underneath layer to show through. I want to meld the shadow color with the more vibrant opaque colors in certain spots. In these situations, I take my paintbrush that I've been painting with and it already still has paint on it. And I just dip it right into my pot of water. I mix it then a little bit on my hand or on my wet palette and boom, I have a nice thinned version of that same color and I go right back to the model. What I'm doing here is creating a thinner mix of the same color. And this is a little trick that I've learned and spent time with over the last couple of years. And it's made a big difference in creating fairly smooth paint jobs for my speed paints really quickly. The really important thing about improvising with your paint consistency like this is it's not about mastering a technical technique. It's about actually learning to paint by feel. Now, I'll apologize right now for not knowing the exact way to communicate what I mean by painting by feel. Really, the best thing I can tell you is that the more you experiment with this, with thinning your paints in different ways, the more at ease you'll be with doing it. You see, the more time you spend painting with different consistencies of miniature paint, the more you'll get used to how they act, how they look, how they leave your brush. And the more you get familiar with that look and that feel, the less you're actually thinking about when to use thinner paints, when to use thicker paints, and you'll just kind of go strictly by what feels right. When you start to get the hang of this, your brain will stop having to work so hard and thinking about which technique, which paint consistency to use, and you'll just enter a flow state. And that flow state is kind of magical. It feels like you're seeing the matrix. And when I'm in a flow state, it's when I'm having the most fun in painting miniatures. So when I decide I wanna paint a miniature quickly and for fun, I'm not using any special fancy techniques. I'm not glazing, I'm not wet blending, nothing like that. I'm just using basic layering across every surface while occasionally jumping over to a thinner paint consistency and simply going back to layering that way. Now you've probably noticed how few paint colors are in this set and I don't know how many will be released with the Kickstarter, but this set is just 12 colors, which includes black and white. And to me, speed painting with a limited amount of colors creates a wonderful harmony between limiting myself and how many paints I need to grab from my shelves with the vast potential of colors I can mix when I need to right on the fly. Now to give a quick idea for you paint connoisseurs out there, I'm gonna compare two other ranges that I think these act most like. First is the Camara range. Now these are a miniature paint that are really high pigment and use pure pigments. And these things are super bold and vibrant. The problem I have with Chimera that I don't have with the Atom paints is these things are still super consistent out of the bottle. Some are super thin, some are super thick, and they don't always act how I want them to act. And I end up getting frustrated with these a lot. The closest comparison I actually have for the Atom paints are the Golden So Flat line, which I love. And these are a pure artist paint. Now, they are a little bit thicker than regular miniature paint, so these always need some thinning out of the bottle, but not too much. These are also 
quite expensive compared to the Atom range. So while these are great, these act much more similarly to other miniature paints that we've used from a variety of other brands. And to compare them to just about every other miniature paint on the market, they are extremely pigment rich. And I don't know if they are pure single pigment paints, but they really, really pop on the miniature. And that is so important for speed painting. So often I'll try to paint a squad or an army fast, but the final paint job comes across as too muted or subdued. This is because most miniature paints have a large mixture of pigments in them to get that unique color in the pot, which then just dulls that color out on the miniature. Also, most miniature paints require three or more coats to get full opacity, and that's because they have to lighten the amount of pigment quality and density in their bottles to make them affordable for you. But when I'm painting fast, I need a miniature paint that is gonna give me a screaming color at the tabletop in just one coat. Now, because there's so few colors in this set, some of you might be skeptical because that means in order to get the specific colors you want, you're gonna have to mix them. And I get your hesitation there, but trust me when I say that mixing paint, just like anything else in this world, gets easier and faster the more you're willing to do it. There's no perfect color mix you need to make. Just experiment. And if it looks close to what you were going for, it will look great on your model. And if you're painting an entire squad or army that all needs the exact same plum colored cloak or dark red colored armor, why not start with one of these pre-mixed other brand bottles? And then just as you're building up your highlights for that vibrant final punch, you can add a bit of yellow, a bit of white, a bit of orange, a bit of magenta from something like these Atom paints that have a pure pigment, and you'll really have that scream in color where you need it. Color mixing turned from chore to fun for me when I realized the frustrations I was having were coming from the paints I were using. They were already complex mixes in those bottles I bought. And what ends up happening more often than not when you mix together two or more of these already complex mixes into a new color, all the life and vibrancy is pulled out as all the blacks, whites, grays, and browns in those mixes come to pass and you lose all your color pop. I don't know about you, but I typically learn best by doing more than reading or watching. I've had a baseline understanding of how colors work together and interact with each other since I took art classes way back in school. But mixing high quality pigment paints and then using those mixes on my minis has taught me so much more about color and color mixing than books ever did. So I guess the moral of the story is as long as you're using the appropriate tool and you lose the fear of failing, the only thing that's left is very satisfying learning. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Now I typically paint the most important and vibrant parts of my models first, which is why most of my videos you'll see me starting with painting the skin. Now some models have so much detail and bullshit going on, uh, like these ones, that I don't really have a planned order of operations on where to go after I'm done with the skin. But you know what? It's just fine to paint the next thing that interests you, or the thing that will use a color that's already mixed on your palette, or whatever other factor you deem logical, as long as you just keep painting. To me, what I'm really trying to avoid is stopping painting to make decisions. Overthinking leads to frustration, which is the last thing I want when I'm painting minis for fun. I tend to leave the least impactful or least important parts of the model to paint at the end. Things that are towards the bottom of the model or on the back side of the model or things that seem like they'll be a pain in the ass to paint around. If I do these last, I know that I'll just need to quickly get them out of my way and then I'll be done with the model. Same thing goes for basing. I often feel like putting in all sorts of effort on basing for our armies or just one-off models is kind of a waste of time. So. Let's not do that. And that's why God invented pigment powder. It is the perfect cheat. It adds a punch of color if that's what you want. It creates a dusty atmosphere if you want contrast that way. And it just covers up the fact that you need to get the model finished so you can go and make dinner for your family. Pigment powder, do it for the children. You know, some part of me as a hobbyist, as a miniature painter, really needed to go through this process and paint this crude. I needed to remind myself that painting something fast with no plan, with no worries, and just mixing fun colors on the fly can be as satisfying as trying my hardest. 
I got to test out a new, less frustrating form of priming. I got to test out some new miniature paints that really showed me that they lived up to what I was hoping they would. I now trust that I can throw a handful of these colors on my desk, and I know that their ease of use and high quality pigment will benefit not only a quick job, but also a really high level one. I know I always say it, but sincerely, thank you. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for subscribing to my channel and a big thank you to my patrons that allow me to keep doing videos like this where we can try out new tools. We can have fun trying to evolve our painting style and get some cool looking minis done quickly. And that is why this miniature hobby is so amazing. It's why it is something I will do until the day I die. There's always something more to learn. There's always something more to experiment with. There's always something more to investigate in developing the style that is truly your own. Now I'll be back again next week with another fun video. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray.